hello my beautiful lovelies welcome back to yet another pick a card reading here on the channel if you're new hi my name is Adie, and i will be your tarot reader today today i am so excited because this bunch of readings are all about love and this whole month you guys are going to just be blessed with the energy of love and romance and spiciness as well okay so i'm really excited but you know i gotta talk to you guys for a little bit just a tiny bit it's probably gonna be a pretty short intro but i do have a few things to say before we get into our reading today one being my bookings are open for the month of february and march so if you want to work with me on a one-on-one -on -one session i read auras and i also read cards i do that over there on etsy all the information is linked down below if you want to book with me it's through etsy i have four options i have a 60 minute which goes way over 60 minutes because i love to talk and i am a reader that doesn't stop until the message is done but I have a 60 minute tarot reading I also have a 60 minute aura reading um, which also comes with tarot so I will read your aura and then we will go into the certain situations or issues that are really um, prominent in your aura and then we'll go more into depth with tarot okay and then I have a solar return reading which is a year long reading so you can book this reading during your birthday season or whenever it's just a year long very in-depth reading i i did a couple this um winter already and the longest one was about six hours okay um so i am really truly a reader that if the message needs to continue it just continues um, but this is a really good option if you want to see how your year will unfold. Um, there's also a fourth option that I was able to add, which I'm really excited. This is an emergency reading. So if you have a quick question, this is a 15 minute reading and you will get your response within 24 hours. So those are the four options that I have right now. I'm really excited that I'm now doing my bookings over on Etsy. So when you click the link down below, it'll take you to 80 rows tarot etsy where you can book with me there i'm really excited it's really interesting where it's like i can talk to you guys right then and there through the etsy app which i really love in case i need a question or in case you need a question um, it's just easier to go through this whole process that i'm doing with etsy i absolutely love it okay so yes my bookings are open for february and march so book with me if you need to um now the tarot deck you guys i do have a tarot deck that i am currently creating right now called earth seed tarot it is my baby it is my passion project that i have been working on the past couple of years Okay, I have launched a GoFundMe Kickstarter to help fund this project. So if you want to help me and support me as an artist, support me as your favorite tarot reader here on the interwebs, check out the GoFundMe. Um, even a share, you guys, even a quick share to someone that loves tarot, loves collecting tarots, and would love to have this tarot deck, Earthsea Tarot, as uh, a tarot deck in their own collection please just share it or donate whatever you guys can i am currently working on this and i cannot wait to gift you guys this blessing this part of me i'm so excited for it i'm getting it done this year um okay so let's move along the candle burnings okay you guys we have i wish i had our candle here i ordered us a special candle um, for the month of February. This month's candle burning is going down on the 7th. The candle burnings are going to be every first Wednesday of the month. We're only doing one candle a month this year. Um, and this year I picked us a soulmate union candle. I'll put in a video here just so that you guys can see it. I don't have it yet. I'm waiting for it. It's supposed to come today, but I had to start and record the videos i couldn't wait until it was here but this is the candle that we're going to be lighting on this first wednesday of february so if you're watching this before it before we um do the candle burning make sure you don't miss it all right so i'm going to light this candle on i believe the first wednesday let's just say the first wednesday because i'm not going to give you the wrong date in this video the first wednesday 
of the month and we're gonna light this around 4 p.m. on live and go straight into ritual. Spirit is getting spicy with this ritual. I haven't yet tapped into it fully because when I put these rituals together, these meditations together, they are a collaboration, a true collaboration between me and Spirit. Okay, it's really fun and interesting and I never really truly know until the download comes in fully before we do the ritual. So I can already feel a sensual, spicy energy, a sensual, sensual energy. Let's just say sensual. And I'm really excited. This is all going to be about love magic and attracting the lover that we want or creating more energy in an already existing relationship. Love and passion and compassion and unity and just seeing someone for who they are okay and accepting them i'm just excited for this ritual this love magic that we're going to get into so if you want your energy to be added to this candle hit the cash app down below um, or the paypal down below i am accepting donations for this candle throughout the whole month okay we're going to be burning it i'm probably going to also add in another love candle to go with it um, I just feel like this is going to be a really big ritual for some reason. That's what I feel. The energy that I'm tapping into that spirit wants us to get into. The ones that are interested in attracting a lover, a soulmate, your twin. Um, join us, okay, on Wednesday night at 4 p.m. I will make a community post about it. It's going to be awesome. But if you want to add your energy into the candle, um, it's donation based. Okay, it's anything that you can afford, anything you think that is worthy for amplifying your intention and your energy. All right, so join us. I'm really excited. Um, and I always give you guys candle updates and I'm definitely gonna update you and get you guys up to speed um, before these videos even come out. But I just wanted to say, in case you guys wanna add in your energy as the month goes in. Um, so let's move along the book clubs there are two book clubs that i started last month in january they are linked down below it is through the app fable which is completely free to join and there's so many different book clubs on there it's so cool um, i created two one is the magically meta book club where we explore um, books of occult metaphysics magical strange books this month i've already picked out the book that we're going to read it is called exploring the world of lucid dreaming i am really excited i haven't posted about it yet but i know the club is going to be so excited to read this um i will always post ahead and give you guys time to get your book okay um i bought this one on amazon I'm excited though. So if you're interested in exploring books of occult, magic, and wonders, join Magically Meta. It's linked down below. I also have another book that's just like for fun. I love reading at night and escaping the 3D reality. So of course I named the second book club Escape from the 3D. Um, right now I'm currently reading Fledgling from Octavia Butler. And I think I want to read Akita, Akita Rit Witch or I might go into another Octavia Butler book because I love her. Okay, so that book club is all about sci-fi and fantasy. That's my vibe, so if that's yours, come and join me over there. There's only a few people with that one, but we're almost to 50 people on Magic Magically Meta. So join the book clubs, even if you just wanna follow along and wait till the next book or wait to a book that you're interested in reading but join us okay and that's pretty much it you guys um there's going to be three pick a cards um posted each week this month just like last month and i am going live twice a week with collective reading so check it out okay also the tiktok um, I post all the little shorts, little mini tarot readings over there, and then I bring them over here. But I am trying to get to a thousand subscribers or followers over there on TikTok so I can also go live over there. I'm trying to go live everywhere, you guys. So join me over there on the TikTok if you're interested. Support your girl over there on TikTok. Follow me on Instagram, 80 Rose on Instagram, and also Earth to 80 over there as well. My TikTok is Earth to 80. It'll be all linked down below, but that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoy this bunch of readings. They're really exciting. It's all about love. I took mostly all of your guys' 
recommendations and I'll probably make another post just to see if any other energies. I'm trying to keep it really positive and very lovey-dovey. So nothing negative, nothing three uh, third-party energy. We ain't tapping into that. We ain't tapping into third party. And if there's a third party, exit. Okay, what was another one? Oh, is your, is your love interest jealous of you? I thought that was interesting. Maybe I will do a short, do a couple shorts. Um, with that type of energy, but I just wanted to keep it really nice and like positive. We are attracting the ideal partnership, the ideal love lover this 2024 or wherever you are in the timeline. Okay. We are attracting what we want. So we're going to tap into that energy. Um, also, my readings are never discriminatory. They're, you know, what, however you flow, whatever you call yourself, you can always just adjust and um, make it fit for you, okay? So I just wanted to put that out there too. Um, you know, I am a questionably straight woman and you know, the energy just comes channeled through me, through my own experience. So you guys just apply it where, where you need to apply it. Fix it, tweak it, whatever you guys need to do, but I don't discriminate, okay? I love you guys and I will see you in, the ne in these readings. Peace. Hello, my beautiful loves. This reading is going to be all about self-love. We have reached 14K this year in the month of January. I'm so proud of us. I just want to also say thank you to everyone that watches my videos, likes, shares, and commenteds, and joins the family. I am just so grateful and appreciative to your love and your energy and your support. I thank you guys. We reached 14K and in honors of that and it being my sixth year here on YouTube, I wanted to gift you guys with a bonus video this February. You know that this February, the energy is all about love. I wanted to bless this channel with a bunch of love videos. And when I realized we reached 14K, I was like, oh my God, we don't have a self love video. And so I was like, I have to gift my babies with a bonus video all about self-love. So this video is gonna be centered around your self-love journey. We'll do a energy check-in on where you are personally in your self-love journey, as well as getting into some practices, some things that can benefit and help you embody more self-love this year, okay? I'm really excited for this one. Now, our reading selection is gonna be quite different than previous videos and ones that you will see this um, this month. This video is sponsored by Rose Forever New York. They sent me this beautiful, clear, crystal clear box of nine roses. I picked the lilac one, which is this very soft pink. I'm looking at the camera and it's true to color. It is this very soft pink, but it is called the lilac um, selection and they have been reaching out to me for some time um, over the past maybe two years and I I'm not very good with <laughs> keeping up with people but I was just like you know what I am going to take them up on this offering they wanted to offer me these nine roses or any really I picked this one because I felt like it would fit me and my lifestyle my um, choice of how I wanted to use this box. I picked the clear um, drawer box, but these are so beautiful, you guys. And so I just wanted to share this with you guys and involve this box in our self-love reading because accepting this offer was an act of self-love for me. Um, and it was like they were trying to adorn me and, you know, honor me as a person that is worthy of these roses. And so I was just like, yeah, this is going to be in our self-love video. Um, and I wanted this box as a, to practice self-love. Um, like I said, I picked the crystal clear box and this box comes with a drawer. Okay. So, um, I was was like, wow, this is perfect for the realm of magic if you want to charge certain things. I'm a glamour witch. I practice a lot of beauty magic, um, a lot of glamour magic. So I was like, um, 
you know, what am I going to use this box for? I know there's so many different ways that I can use this box in the realm of my magical and spiritual practice. Um, I was thinking of using it, putting my, um, my makeup brushes in here, charging my makeup brushes with the intention of more beauty, um, for certain intentions that I would like to do with my makeup. Um, I thought that was really cool, but then I was like, it's going to get dirty and then I'm going to have to clean it, which maybe one time I will, I will probably switch it up and use this box for different things. Right now I am using it for charging my jewelry. Now a practice that I have really tapped into, um, this year, 2024 is adorning myself with jewelry. I've been buying a bunch of new jewelry. They're all in here and I, um, jewelry can be enchanted. It can be charged. So my jewelry is sitting in this box and is being charged by these roses, which are preserved for like over a year. I've seen other people on YouTube, um, be gifted these roses from Rose Forever and they have been lasted for like two, three years and they still look very beautiful and fresh. So they are being charged by these roses. Um, and you're able to enchant and charge your jewelry for, with certain intentions. So I thought that was really cool. That's what I'm currently using them for right now. I think this would really be great as a manifestation box too. Um, like I said, I chose the lilac color. They have so many different colors that you can choose from. I think this would be really great as a, um, manifestation box or, a box that you know is centered around calling in your soulmate I think that would be an awesome um Ari my kitty he's coming over here I think charging your letters and your ambulance or using this as a box to communicate with your soulmate um, and to manifest your soulmate or manifest your ideal lover I think that this would be amazing to use for, but also just, you know, I'm using it as a self-love box for charging my jewelry. You can also use it as, you know, pouring more love into yourself, putting different things in here, letters to yourself. Um, ooh, let me not drop the camera, but I think this box is very versatile. You could put love letters to yourself. Um, put date ideas, solo date ideas in here to pick from each week. I think this box can be very versatile. They have all different colors that you could do. Um, so you could also match it up with your intention. I picked the nine roses and I think this might be the smallest box. I think I just wanted something kind of small that I can keep on my vanity where I could put my you know, beauty items or um, jewelry or whatever in. And I love that it's clear. It also, the top comes off so you can actually view your roses. Okay, they're so beautiful. I just love it. And um, I only work with companies that I truly love and believe in and they've been reaching out but like I said um, I'm not very well and that's something that I'm also you know I'm not really um, I haven't been good at replying back and accepting offers to companies um, and that's also something that I'm working on as self-love is you know um, collaborating with people and so Forever Rose is a company that I feel that like we align with each other so this is the first company that I'm working with and I really love what they sent me now with this reading selection there's three reading selections okay like always we're always gonna have three reading selections um, and how we're gonna do this is that you're just gonna focus on this box okay maybe spirits telling me to put it right here now you can just focus on it and let a number come to you between one and three. And you can stare at the jewelry right here because we are gonna pull out some pieces and I'm gonna read the energy off of a piece of jewelry for our self-love. So you can maybe just view the jewelry down here. Maybe you stare at the roses and you just let a number come to you, either one, two, or three. 
and I'll give you guys a couple minutes. Now, if you want to um, look into Rose Forever, you can um, check the description box. All the information is down below. You can read what they're all about and click on the website and go and purchase your own Forever or Rose Forever box. I am really excited to share this with you guys. I think it's very versatile, these boxes here um, and the other selections that they have. They also have um, many different selections to choose from, not just a crystal box, but other boxes and carriers of Forever Roses. So go and check that out, but I'll give you guys a couple seconds to kind of let that number come to you and then I'll see you at your reading. Hello, reading number one. Welcome to your reading. We're going to dive in and see how we can embody more self-love for us. We're going to go into the jewelry box and pull out one of these pieces. I don't know what we're going to get. Um, there's some old pieces in here and there's some new ones that I just recently bought. So I'm just going to dig in here and see what comes out for you. Okay, I already know what this is. Yeah. And I'm not looking as i turning my, my head away from... There's a lot of things tangled. Maybe I should just allow whatever comes out to come out. Okay. So we'll do with these pieces. The first piece, though, is one of my favorite pieces. There's a few necklaces that are connected to each other. Especially this, actually I lied, this one is my favorite and I'll show you after I show the one that I touched first. Okay, so here's our pieces. We'll look at those. The first one that to come out is my spider pendant. This is one of my favorite pieces that I've bought myself. Um, I bought this a few years ago, um, but this is one of my favorites. And the spider is really dear to me. So I feel that for your self-love journey, it's going to be about creativity for you. It's about um, tapping more into your creativity, um, becoming more yourself, like loving your, your unique parts of yourself and allowing your creativity to come through those unique parts, okay? That's what this pendant is kind of telling me. Um, and also your creativity is your protection. Um, so actually tapping more into your creativity is a form of self-love and also a form of protecting yourself in different ways. So this kind of makes me think that you need to see how beautiful your creativity is, how unique your creativity is, and how that can literally draw more of what you want towards you in forms of also protection. So I'm really feeling money, like financial protection, as well as um, just you being uniquely you and expressing that unique energy and not feeling like you have to um, copy or even just be jealous of other people. Like just tapping more into your unique energy and letting that like express through you in different ways is a form of letting people that really value you and love you um, and that will love you gravitate more towards you. Okay, because when I think of the spider, I think of the web, number one. And so you have the po you have the ability to draw things towards you. You can cast this net of creativity and attract the things that you want that will feed you, that will um, keep you alive. And it's all about your creativity. It's all about being uniquely you and it letting that unique energy be expressed through your creativity. Okay, so never doubt that about yourself. Now... We also have this scorpion. Um, this is a new piece that I just recently bought. 
this is the scorpion earpiece it's an earring um so what i feel about this is that um there's a lot about protection that's coming up because i feel like scorpions are very interesting um creatures but they also um in, i want to say inspire a lot of fear um you're intimidating Okay, so I also want you to not, what the message is here is that some people are, could be very intimidated by you. Um, a lot of people stare at you because of your beauty and your unique energy, number one. Um, but you also intimidate a lot of people. So it's important that you don't internalize their intimidation. Okay, that energy of intimidation is theirs. It is not yours. Okay, they are intimidated. Let's say that they are intimidated and you are just being you. You're not invoking. I don't feel that you are a person that um, in, wants to invoke fear in people. But you do this naturally. Um, and I don't think you've really grasped who you truly, what you, what power you truly possess. Okay, so you're... Um, self-love reading is probably going to be about that is tapping into your power I'm being told and seeing yourself for who you really are okay but you have the power to kill people okay <laughs> you have the power to just you know um, take people down with your words with your words is really what I'm hearing so that's something to really love about yourself is that, like I said, you have the power to protect yourself. Um, and it's okay if people are intimidated by you. It's not you personally. It's really what's inside of them, you know? So that's beautiful. Now this piece is an earring that I bought years and years ago. Okay. Um, it has the unk on it one of my favorite pieces that I love to wear especially when I'm bald um so what I'm being told here is that you're at the beginning of your spiritual journey your self-discovery journey um I'm also being told that you know I mentioned being copying or jealousy there's this karmic energy Everybody can be a karmic at certain phases in their life and everybody can be a divine in certain phases of their life. What I'm feeling is that you are now exiting that karmic energy. So everybody experiences jealousy at some point. It's just about wanting something that you think that you can't have. Wanting something that somebody else has whether that be a physical thing, a non-physical thing. Um, and a lot of karmic energy is about processing that energy. So I, um, I'm being told to be gracious with yourself as you transition more into a divine energy, into a divine masculine or divine feminine. I just like to say divine energy where you're more streaming from this um your individualism okay which is really beautiful so I I want you to be gracious with yourself as you go deeper into this transition and from this point forward I feel like you've most of your life you've been in a karmic energy of mimicking let's just say not copying but mimicking what you see from other divine energies and um, you're gonna be coming out of that I think you're having some struggle you're having some struggle with that because you don't understand what's going on um, but I feel like you need to be gracious with yourself and allow this true version, which will be a mixture of inspiration, a mixture of your ancestors, a mixture of spirit, okay, come into play. Be gracious with that. Don't be afraid to go deeper into what's just you, you know, what you find to be divine, okay? Um, let's yeah let's look at this here now this was gifted to me 
um, if you look, I wonder if you guys can see. Let me see. Hold on. Let me see if I can see it. So this, you can actually stare into the middle and view a, see if I can, where's the camera? I don't know if you guys can view it. It's so cool though when you look inside. Um, inside this, in the center of this snowflake um, is a picture of me and my babies, okay? It is one of my best gifts, one of my favorite pieces in the jewelry box. And it usually entangles a lot of the new pieces and the other necklaces. It just, that's why everything was connected because of this thing here. So what I want to say here is that your self-love journey is going to involve becoming greater for other people in your life. Loving yourself so that the next generation or even just people that you come in contact with is going to be a step further than where you were when you were in their place. Becoming better and focusing on yourself so that you can take care of others, whether that be your friends, your family, your children, um, people that you work with. Um, your self-love journey, which is really great, involves the evolution of others, okay? So that's very lovely. I love that. Um, ooh, I don't know why. This is one of my new pieces. It's a snake. I've been really connected to snake energy as of late. Um, and it's an earring. I haven't yet been able to wear this piece. But it's one of my favorite colors. My favorite color is blue. And um, what I feel is that you're going to be cut off. This is making me feel like a snake kind of being sort of cut into two. Um, and what I'm being told here is that there's a part of you that you have to let go of. And this is going to be an act of self-love. And you're going to grow. Because snakes, some reptiles, I want to say, that when they're cut, when their tail is cut, it can grow back. So there's going to be a part of you that begins to grow that is truly supposed to last. But I, a part of your self-love journey is allowing things to be severed from you. And that to not be scared of that process. Not be scared of that process. Okay? So a lot of the self practices is about letting go of certain people, certain practices, certain versions of self in order to grow, in order to um, reincarnate, reinvent, um, recreate, um, step into new energy to grow more. Okay. Um, and then the last piece that I see here is this necklace. This is also a new piece that I just bought. Um, it's two snakes coiled together. And so, like I said, um, I feel like there is a process of what, when you go into this divine energy, you will see that you will let go of some of the things that you thought that you wanted, right? Because when we're in a karmic energy, we tend to look at other divine people or just people in general, whether they're karmic or divine, whatever you're drawn to. And these are just stepping stones leading to where you need to be. Now, a lot of people can get lost in that and don't know how to navigate out of that when they condition themselves uh, to mimic, right? What I feel for you is that you're going to kind of bring some of those things with you. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to bring some of those things that you see out into the world. I want you to think of divine as going out and leaving the nest, going out into the world to kind of build something that is just yours. And uh, what happens there is that when you're a karmic and you're looking and you're inspired and you're mimicking because you think that's what you need to do in order to be accepted, when you finally make that transition and becoming, um, stepping onto your own divine path, you take some of those um, things and you build upon it it morphs into a unique version, a unique 
extension. It doesn't really become a mimic. You begin to morph it into something that is individually you. Okay, so this is making me feel like a part of your self-love journey is about taking what you've seen, what you've learned, what inspires you, and begin to morph it into something. Begin that transmutation. Begin that alchemy and morph it into something that is uniquely yours. That it doesn't feel like, you know, this is something that, you know, I'm just inspired to do. And this is takes the act of fully committing to the things that inspire you and putting all of your energy into it. And when you do that, it begins to morph into something that is uniquely yours, okay? And this is said to anything, um, anything, any kind of energy. It could be your appearance. It can be lifestyle changes. It can be um, certain activities, it can be anything, diet, anything I'm hearing. So allow yourself to take what you're inspired by and to morph it into something that is uniquely yours. Okay. Um, and I'm being told that this is how you activate divine masculine and divine feminine energies. Okay. So those are the jewelry that came out. I want to pull some cards now to see what is the the energy that we need to start embodying for you number one we have curiosity so this is my relationship deck this is about um building a relationship with yourself when we're working on self-love and it says here the frequency of curiosity supports our eccentric inquisitive nature Okay, which is necessary for driving force be behind the growth of evolution. So it's time to really say, you know what? It's it's time to be curious, okay, to look at things and to really inspect and dive into questioning yourself. Is this a part of fantasy or is this really something that I resonate with? So some of the things that you need to start asking yourself is, am I truly aligned with this energy or am I just um, bedazzled? I want to say bedazzled by it. Because um, a lot of times this is about separating the fantasy self, you know. So play with this and don't be afraid to let go of anything. All because you let go of something that maybe somebody else that you admire and that you love. Letting go of whatever that is, whether it be, oh, it's fine. I don't have to be skinny. I don't have to have this perfect body in order to be. I actually like having a fuller body. I actually need to start loving and exploring my curvy body. I went through this before. There was a time and period where I felt like I had to be the skinniest, right? And this can also go for women because I've had people in my life that had trouble gaining weight and desperately really wanted to gain weight and they had to do unhealthy things in order to gain it, right? Or whatever, you know? It's about loving yourself, right? And see where the fantasy self is, within all of these things that you do so it's about being curious and when you're curious you're really kind of becoming a studier it's time to really study who you really are that is a part of your self-love journey is becoming to becoming familiar with yourself okay and um letting go of the things that don't align with you Okay, and that doesn't mean that if you let go of this certain behavior, certain look, certain lifestyle, that you're not going to be accepted. It's not about really being accepted. Life is not really about being accepted by others. It's really about being accepted by yourself. Okay, what else? Reflection. So you need to reflect more. 
The energy of reflection supports our growth through the insights we get from contemplations of self and others. It's time to contemplate this, to have reflection on other people. I think also like, um, you know, a lot of times when we can look to other people and say, oh, I really like what they do. You can, you know, register it as like, oh, but what I'm doing, it's not, you know, good enough, right? Um, I, in order to be good enough, I have to be like this, let alone, you don't even know if that person is, you know, the thing is, is that we can become enamored by, um, fantasy of other people, you know, um, fantasy of other people. So, you know, oh, I have to be this way because this person is this way and this is how they got A and B. When in fact, you really don't know how they got A and B, you know? And so there needs to be a reflection period for yourself. This is an act that you can do for yourself. You could stop and just really reflect, be curious and go into reflection. One more spirit, romantic love. So I'm seeing this romantic love as um, romanticizing your own self and relationship to self. This doesn't involve any other people, right? This reading is about self-love. So I'm hearing dating yourself. In the intro, I, you know, I mentioned maybe making this into a solo date box, right? Stuffing that drawer with solo date ideas. Um, I think that practice can be actually very beneficial for you, number one. It says the frequency of romantic love supports our experience to know ourselves through the reflection of a conscious lover. I feel like when you begin to really date yourself and really just spend time alone with self, you know, dating yourself, yes, we, you know, we like to idolize and romanticize this idea of going out to a restaurant or going out to the movie theater or going to a paint and sit by ourselves, right? Which is great. I feel like that is great, a great practice to do. But also just being alone with yourself and getting to know yourself, doing activities alone and just being in your own energy can be very beneficial for you. So even if you, you know, can't at the moment go and do these things that cost money. Um, I think that practice is very beneficial, but sometimes it's, it's not doable or, and I don't want you to feel like, oh, I can't do these things. But if you can just chill in your room, dance, have a glass of wine, um, paint in your room, draw, watch a movie by yourself, it's more about just being by yourself, journaling, talking to yourself in the mirror, having a conversation with yourself in the mirror to understand more about yourself is going to be so beneficial for you. Okay, so let's go into some self care acts that you can do for yourself. Okay, number one see what you can do chanting so building this relationship of chanting affirmations into your um into yourself in your to your subconscious right into the ethers about self being alone this is also a very alone practice right and letting that energy rise up from the root to the crown um i'm seeing this one way of doing your affirmations where you do it through the chakras right? Um, so for instance, the root is I am, you know, beautiful. Um, the, the, sa the sacral is feel, I feel. So I feel beautiful. The solar, um, um, the solar plexus is about your willpower. So it's like, I will, it's about doing, right? Um, and so it's like making those affirmations align with the, um, with the chakras I'm hearing aromatherapy. So buying yourself and gifting yourself, maybe some perfume, you know, can, um, also be an act of self love. Um, this was some, a self love practice that I did for myself last year where I got a subscription to a perfume, um, company where they would send me perfume each month right? That was a act of self-love. 
I gifted myself perfume each month. Sing. So allowing yourself to really sing. Um, one of my self-love practices is turning on some music and dancing and singing in my room. It's one of my, one of my greatest times alone is just being in my room, singing, vibing, dancing by myself. Okay. We have clear your energy field. I also feel like you're really tapping into a lot of people, which when we are in this karmic energy, transitioning into a divine, trying to learn our divine energy, we look to the teachers, right? The divine is the teacher. The divine feminine, the divine masculine is the teacher. Um, and sometimes, like I said, you really don't fully know, though, sometimes when you're in this energy, you're just, when you're a karmic and you're trying to learn how to be, when you're trying to learn how to love yourself and to find this path of self-love, you can look to other things that look interesting, right? And when we open ourselves up to that, it can be even in the sense of like YouTube videos, um, movies, you know, we're so influenced. So what I'm feeling with this is clearing your energy is a an act of self-love, okay? Is an act of self-love, um, clearing that energy, getting more in just in your own energy. I feel like if you clear your energy on a daily basis, you'll feel more yourself and you'll tap more into that divine nature that is just divinely you. We have hydrate. So making sure that you're fully hydrated um, is going to be a self, an act of self-love. I feel like your guides are telling you to drink more water. We have be still. Okay. So some of this, um, a lot of just being alone, I feel like not necessarily being in quiet energy, but being alone, being in your own energy. And also, yes, there is this silent energy of quieting the mind. Even chanting can be a, you know, there is sound involved, but there's this energy of just like silencing your mind. I think there's a lot of chatter going on upstairs so an act of self-love is tapping into that that silence um i know it says be still but i also feel like that's stealing the mind you know there's a lot of movement going on upstairs so that could be an act of self-love that you can start doing today okay we have discovering happiness allow my i allow myself to be content exactly as I am. And this is what I was really feeling for you. Um, number one is that you're looking and you're searching for your happiness. And um, I feel like you need to allow yourself to be content with exactly who you are. You might be attaching yourself to certain things that don't truly make you happy. And it almost feels like you see other people happy. So you feel like you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to do these practices, these activities, and there's no silence. There's no reflection going on where you realize, you know what? This actually doesn't make me happy. Um, it doesn't make me happy anymore. It was something that, you know, in, that invoked the fantasy self. I tried it out, but actually, why am I trying to keep up with this when it doesn't really make me happy? Um, so... It's about letting go of the things that are not truly you. That is where your self-love lies, okay? And allow yourself to be okay with who you are. Maybe you're not like that person. Maybe you're completely different, and that is okay. That is where your happiness lies, okay? Let's see, it says greeting wellness. Balance is the key to life of infinite miracles so this is making me feel that you're a little bit out of balance here and we see it with the curiosity the reflection you need time alone and when you're alone when you put yourself in isolation this is something that i have become very comfortable in in fact i think i was just always comfortable with being alone and being in isolation and i watched this video just recently about how isolation is um isolation is a gift a lot of people feel like they need people around them, that they need to be um, 
surrounded by different energies and when you are around so many people or even people that you don't really align with some people just hang out with people just because they don't want to be alone and um this forces them into an imbalance you know it pushes them into a um an imbalanced energy because i feel like also there could be people around you that you don't really align with they don't make you happy but you keep them around just for the fact that you're scared to be alone with yourself, to truly be alone with yourself, number one. So I feel that, you know, a wellness practice, wellness, not even just self-love, but wellness is about kind of allowing yourself to be imbalanced and um, be balanced. Okay. And, um, that takes you kind of stepping away and allowing the energies of self just to come into balance, to come into alignment, okay? We have exploring unity consciousness. I am open, oh, I'm sorry, I am one internal light appearing as all, okay? So it says exploring unity consciousness. What I'm feeling here is that there is this energy of needing to be alone, to reflect, to dive more into being curious about self, right? And about who, what really makes you happy and what can really bring you into balance. I feel like you need to see that, like I was saying, you're going to be taking with you some of these inspirations, you know, and going off, leaving the nest, leaving um, what you've known right? And you take some of that inspiration. And I want you to know that while those things that you're leaving behind, they'll still be with you in some type of way, even though you're leaving them behind. Okay. That's what I'm getting from that card. And I wanted to pull one card from this tarot. Let's see what your next, um, your next stage that you'll be moving into. Um, what is that going to be like concerning your self-love journey? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So we have, we have the four of wands. We have the knight of cups and the king of voices, which is the king of swords. So with this four of wands, I really see you beginning to take care of house. Um, this is the happy home and it's really showing me, um, and you see these four women, I, I don't know why, but they're making me feel of the four, like the four elements, right? And the person viewing them is the spirit because there's really five elements, right? So there's a spirit, maybe that's your divine spirit witnessing these energies of emotion, intellect, um, energy, um, and your physical. So I see you taking care of yourself. Um, and I don't really see this as being around people, even though the, you know, this is the four of wands is about unity, but it's becoming like complete within yourself. I see that for you. And I see you taking an account to how your physical body is. I see you working out or doing some type of physical activity with your body and also taking into account to how you're feeding and nourishing and like viewing your body and treating your body, even the forms of, um, even in the forms of how you speak to your body, right? Which leads me to the, um, the air element, which is about, um, intellect, right? Your thoughts are beginning to change. You're beginning to change the way that you think. But also, I feel like you're going to be reading a lot of books that help you on this journey of self-love. I also feel that um, with these energies here, with also the Knight of Cups with your emotions, this is about um, like pouring love into self, really beginning to change the dialogue the communication, but also loving on yourself. I'm seeing this video that I just recently recorded where I was hugging myself, you know, and you're going to be like emotionally, um, like kind of 
what do I want to say? The, key, the Knight of Cups is about like swooning and romanticizing someone, seducing. I feel like this is a like a love affair that you begin to have with yourself. You're checking in with your emotions as well. You're not, you're not making other people responsible for the way that you feel. That's what I also feel too with this Knight of Cups and the water element, which is your emotions. Now for that wand element, that fire element, that energy element, I see you taking care of your energy, whatever that needs to happen, whether you need to go to therapy, where you, whether you need to just get comfortable with just being alone in your own energy. I see that happening for you. We have this, um, muse of voices and that's why i say therapy i feel like a lot of you guys are going to be choosing to go to therapy and that doesn't mean um anything negative about you you know i feel like you're taking accountability that you know i'm not happy i don't know what is going to make me happy there's a few things that i can see but i just feel like i need a little bit of direction so i feel like with this muse of voices which is the king you find some type of mentor that helps you with that mental stability that mental programming that you know it starts at birth honestly. So this is kind of making me feel like you're going to be doing what your inner child needed. You're going to be going and shifting through. Um, you're going to be going and shifting through childhood trauma. So I really, really, really love this for you. I really, really love this for you. I want to pull one more card just to end this for us. Okay. Number one, gate. Okay, we have the gate. So what I'm feeling for you for this one, number one, is that you're going to be cre um, crossing the threshold of where you are. And this involves like really showing up for yourself. Your self-love journey, it consists of really kind of letting go of these external forces. And I feel like these external forces, whether they be in the forms of like people, jobs, um, practices, behaviors, whatever, I feel like they have been keeping you gated. And once you really move into the form of just living your life authentically, it's not inspired by other people, you kind of break down these boundaries that you have with yourself. You know, when... When you say, you know, I don't really like that I do that. Um, I've been doing this because I felt like I had to in order to please the world, to please other people. And in fact, you know, I don't even like doing this. I don't know what I'm going to do besides doing this, but it's time for me to find out. And that's when the gates open of self-discovery, true self-discovery. Okay, is it what I'm feeling for you? You're releasing yourself from these, the prison, you know, of feeling like I have to be a certain way. I have to be like this. I have to act this way. I got to do these certain things. A lot of you guys are going to be like, you know what? I don't like this profession. I don't like what I've been doing for these past years. And I feel like I've been doing it because I need to please other people. Or I feel like it's the right thing. When honestly, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't make me happy. A lot of you guys are going to be like, you know what? I'm done with dieting. I'm not going to diet just to be try to have this perfect body. It's more about being healthy. And that also means mentally healthy and emotionally healthy. A lot of you guys have, are going to recognize that you have some form of eating disorder. It might not be so extreme where it's causing you harm. Okay. But a lot of you guys are really recognizing it. And the once, once you do that, the gates fly open. And you're able to gravitate towards what you're really supposed to gravitate towards. There's The gates are opening for you this year, number one. And I'm really excited for you. I hope that this reading was insightful. Remember, I am booking readings this month. If you want to go deeper into this energy and have it be more personal to different practices or different things book a reading with your girl okay down below you can find my etsy where i can where you can book a reading with me that's the only place that you can book a reading with me 
Um, I have many different options. You know, they were explained in the intro, so I ain't going to go into it there. But if you feel called to, hit me up and we can go deeper into this and help you walk through those gates. Okay? Walk through those gates of self-discovery, number one. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next reading. Peace. Hello, hello, number two. These are number one's jewelry, and I was told by um, Spirit that we're going to leave these here and we're just going to go in and pull out some more so we can get different energies. Um, but yeah, number one was extremely long, so I'm only guessing this is going to be long as well, too. Um, hey, I really wanted to give it to you guys, give you a nice, good self-love reading. I really loved how number one turned out. But let's get into this. Let me finish eating for the ones that get so annoyed. <laughs> but you know, it's a self-love. It is self-love, number twos. I need to have a little bite here and there. Okay? So we're going to get into our reading. I'm going to pull this open and I'm going to look away and just dig into it intuitively and pull out some pieces for your reading. Ooh. Okay. I want to get some more. Just one more. Ooh, two of those. Okay. All right. Um, let me see here. Okay. We'll just put one of these back since I have only one. We'll do these. Okay. These are actually all new pieces that I bought. Okay. So this is a snake ring you guys you guys will probably see a lot of snake stuff in here because the new jewelry that i bought i'm really into the snake energy right now so of course you have this snake ring that came out for you number two um <clears throat> so your self-love journey is all about shedding it's all about shedding the skins you know and a letting you know somebody told me the other day my man we were sitting in bed talking about life and i was talking to him about the snake energy that i'm like attracted to right now and he was like well what happens when a snake like they shed because i was talking about my cute lindy like experience and I know that I'm attracted to this snake energy because I'm changing right now, you know? And he was like, um, well, what happens when a snake sheds its skin? It grows. So you're growing, you know? And so I feel like you are, you know, your, your journey, you shed, like you have no problem. It's something, it's actually what I'm being told is that it's almost involuntary, like, it's not like you're like, okay, I'm ready to grow, but it's some, it's like a process that comes around every once in a while you change. Um, and I'm not feeling like you feel like reluctant or anything to go through these changes. But um, I guess what I'm feeling is that your self love journey You have to become comfortable with your, it's like, it's like a natural thing that you go through. And it's something that's like not controllable, you know? And so I feel like if this is something you might right now going through one of these changes yourself where you're growing and a lot of things are beginning to shed and you're like, oh no, this is happening again right? It's not like you're reluctant, like you're trying to stop it. That's what I'm feeling. You're not trying to stop it, but it's like, oh, this is what's happening again. It might feel different than how it felt before when you went through one of these sheddings. But this is a part of your self-love is, um, what I'm feeling is like being more, uh, observant to what's going around, what's going, you know, in order to be more in tune with self, you have to kind of see others for who they are, you know? So I feel like you're going through, and that's, there's like these two little dots on the snake. And so I feel like your self-love journey is about seeing people that need to kind of leave your life or seeing how you're growing 
past these people and allowing yourself to grow. I don't feel like you're hesitant, but you might slow the process. You know that it's something that you can't control, but I think if you can fully say, okay, it's time to change. I'm changing. Here, here it comes again. This can be more enjoyable for you and you can tap more into the practices that are available to you. Because what I'm being told is that sometimes you might slow the practice or you might focus too much on things that, you know, that you've grown past. And in that, you're doing an injustice to yourself. You're actually harming yourself when you're focusing on the dead skin. When you're focusing on the things that are shedding from your life, when you should be focusing on this new skin that you're in and the new environment that you're moving into, you know, um, and the new embodiment that you're in, you, it's, you need to put your full focus into that is what I'm feeling from this. You need to put your full focus into who you are becoming versus what is shedding. Even if it's just reminiscing or going over and over of, you know, how things are beginning to present themselves to you. It's not like you're doing a true harmful act to self, but the fact that you're focusing more on that than the embodiment of who you are becoming is an injustice. It is, you know, you could be more fulfilled if you would just focus more on like the new body that you're coming into. And when I say the new body, it's not really something physical. It's just like the new self, you know, that you're coming into. So, and I'm also being told, like, every seven years, your body changes, right? It becomes new. So it's that kind of energy, like, you're becoming really new right now. And you need to embody that energy and also feed this new body. And you can't feed it if you're just so focused on, like, oh, no, it's coming off. It's shedding, right? It's coming off. It's shedding. This energy is going. It's leaving me. It's no longer here, right? There is an energy of feeling like, you know, hopefully that this, this charger, uh, I need to buy a new charger, guys. Let me put my charger on. I don't know. I'm going to have to watch it. Um, but what was I saying? I was saying that, you know, um, you're becoming new and you're focusing on the old stuff. You're focusing on either the old version of self or old energies that are leaving or that are, are that you've grown out of. And it's an injustice of self. So your self-love journey right now is going to be more focused on focusing on self, becoming aware of who you are and not who you used to be. Or what was in your life five minutes ago five days ago five months ago how five months ago were I don't know why that's coming up but five months ago could have been a point where you begin to shed okay old energy so this is a new piece these are all new pieces I got this these unk earrings right um, and I feel like a lot of your self practices are going to be about embodying because I've always been attracted to Egyptian um, spirituality, right? And I've worked with Isis um, over the over a couple years. And um, maybe I can make a detailed video about how I work with deities um, and certain energies and characters. But I feel like your self-love journey is going to be about embodying these archetypes, okay? Finding and letting these archetypes emerge and fully beginning to embody in them. Ooh, let me see if this charger will work. Because this one, I don't know, I was doing a climb the other day and it just shut off. I was like, no. Don't fall now. Okay, good. That's gonna work a lot better. Okay, where is, oh, it's right here. So you are gonna be embodying these internal, um, you know, 
archetypes. Now, it doesn't have to be Egyptian. It could be some other form of, um, you know, system or whatever. But I think gods and goddesses, deities, um, work is going to be a part of your self-love energy, even if it's just studying about them and learning about their story, right? And seeing how it matches your phase of life that you're embodying right now. Okay. So that's coming in really strong. We have this, this is a new piece. One of my favorite pieces. It's an earring. You guys, I love it. It's a sword and it has a drop of blood at the, at the bottom of the dagger or sword. I think it's a dagger. And I love these. It's so beautiful. And I've been so attracted to the color red Hint my nails. Okay. Um, but I feel like uh, your self-love journey is also going to be, and also with the snake, their bite hurts, right? And Megan Thee Stallion just dropped her new um, song, Hiss. I don't know why that's coming up. But you have a lot to say. And people feel like, I don't know. This is the thing. Some people might feel like, just for some of you guys, this might resonate. Where there are some people feeling like you need to clear your name right? They're talking about you. They could be spreading lies. They could be just saying certain things because they're jealous because you're evolving. You're changing. You have no problem like, you know, evolving and growing. That's what the snake is symbolic for is evolution, kudalindi energy, rising to the top, right? Ascension. So you get, when you do that, a lot of people that are, um, either not growing with you or are just accustomed to these lower vibe energies, right? They have a lot to say and they feel like you might feel like you have to um, clear your name. You don't. I'm also hearing that too. A lot of your self love is there's certain things that you don't even have to speak on. It's like, it's below you. Honestly, they're lies. Their twist of truth is really below you. And, you know, giving it shine, drawing attention. In fact, this is what these people want from you. It makes them relevant. It makes them feel powerful. And so a lot of your self-love is going to be like, should I speak on this? I also feel like a lot of your self-love will be like, you know what? I'm going to speak my truth. Now, if you feel like it's called for, to speak your truth, you should speak on it. That's going to be an act of self-love, even if it hurts, even if it draws blood. I feel like a lot of your truth on certain things about yourself, about your life, it has the potential to just draw blood, draw life force, um, to take life force, you know? Um, and so I feel like a lot of your self-love will be uh, like communication, either choosing to communicate or not to communicate. And when you do communicate, it's going to be in the alignment of truth. Okay? It's going to be in the alignment of truth. And even when you choose not to communicate, it's in alignment with truth. Um, there's no need for you to defend yourself or to clear your name or to correct people or to fix things with your words. Like... There's no need, and that's going to be an act of self-love. Now, there's going to be times where you're going to have to speak up and tell people exactly how it is, and it might hurt. The truth hurts, and you can't, you can't, especially now I'm seeing like a snake that is like being like fucked with, a snake that's being like kind of fucked with and eventually bites. That's an act of self-love. It's an act of self-defense. Now, I'm seeing it in the form of just like telling somebody how it is. It's almost like you've reached your, your point, your limit with something, with someone. And that you, you might be, um, I feel like this people-pleasing is going out the door. This next phase, this shedding, you're shedding people-pleasing. You're more focused on pleasing yourself than pleasing others. And I think that's beautiful. Okay. Now, you got a lot of snake energy, you know. I did buy a lot of snake jewelry because I'm just on it. And let me look. Let me look at the other snake because these, both of these, maybe I should. Hold on, let me see. 
because both of these earrings I love them because they're very different they have like little pearls on it I like how they're um kind of remind me of like stained glass I haven't yet been able to wear these but let me look at this one because they both came out and then this one is like curled downward yeah mm -hmm. and this one's like coming back up right this one's kind of spiraled down to to attack these look very aggressive these snakes look very aggressive they're hissing they're about to attack right so that's the one that I kind of kept out this one is spiraling down to attack and this one is spiraling up it's spiraling back up right so what I'm feeling is that I wanted to put that one away and I kept this one out so what I'm feeling is that you need to stop spiraling down it's not about spiraling down um, anymore unless it's called to unless you are called to spiral down right um, I feel like you might be doing this and this is about matching people's energy you know this is about lowering your vibration right lowering your frequency meeting people where you no longer really um, reside at so you need to think if it's even worth spiraling down to attack these people that are down you know that are down there and it's not about oh you're high up and you're better than these people but there's levels of consciousness there are levels of everything it's not good it's not bad it's not better it's not whatever it just is so you want to be comfortable because what I'm feeling is like when you have to go down over here and leave your current level of life when you have to leave to go all the way down to address something that's an act that is not giving love to self that's what I'm getting from this and it's a waste of your energy now sometimes you got to go down there for there's you know you got to and this is about a lot of the times right now it's going on with you you don't need to is what I'm really feeling and that's why I was picking up how like you don't even need to address these people you know but there is this energy this aggressive energy that you can apply to other forms so we'll go deeper into that we're gonna get into our cards now number two let's see what else comes out for you let's look into the relationship okay of self okay so we got that fifth chakra all right fifth chakra the energy of the throat chakra supports our ability to communicate clear clearly and truthfully okay that's you you are using that throat chakra and a part of your self-love is learning how to control this energy learning how to have it benefit for you you know some people can only hear you from afar when you're up front and center in their face they can't hear you isn't that crazy that's what I'm being told for some of y'all and so a part of your self-love journey is about learning how to communicate clearly and truthfully direct you know it's also about like eliminating all the theatrics and just keeping it very um not surface but to the point we're not gonna go over and over certain situations about um you've already processed how you felt in the heart and now it's time to really um connect uh connect with that vocal and just bringing that truth out and it's not really about when you're in the throat chakra it's not about your feelings it's a mixture of you know when you're in your heart you're feeling things right and when that energy moves up into the throat you're able to connect to your thoughts what do you think about how you feel right and being able to communicate that clearly so take time before you speak you know take time before you speak because if you start analyzing how you're feeling right what you felt in the heart space how it made you feel and what do you think about that maybe you'll realize this person is a narcissist 
And even if I brought my feelings and I brought and I explained how I felt and now I'm no longer really in a throat chakra energy, I'm back into my throat. I mean, I'm back into my heart and I'm just really feeling, I'm crying, I'm, you know, this person's not going to care. Narcissists don't care. Narcissistic people actually want to see you in that emotional state because it fuels them. So if you would take a moment to see, should I even address this situation or should I just accept it for what it is? Sometimes you can have these thought processes and realize, you know what? I think with the way I feel about this situation, I think I'm better off just staying where I'm at and focusing on where, what's happening where I'm at and not going down to that level or not going to that location, okay, um, to break me from my focus, to break me from what I think to be important at this moment. Maybe it's not healthy for you to communicate right now. So a lot of your self-love journey is going to be about learning how to control your throat chakra. And all because you're not able to talk to that person or communicate your truth in a certain way doesn't mean that you don't have to you can't do it in other ways or communicate it to somebody that can validate and understand you sometimes it can be very healing just going to the people that are not crazy that are not narcissistic that don't have mental issues because really when it comes down to it that's what it is it's not about it is about how these people can't really hear you and they need to see you from an idolized point somewhere far because when you're up close they're so focused on power they're so focused on control okay and i already see that you are not a controllable person you're con like you control yourself and you don't allow other people to control you in that way you know where it takes you out of reality okay even if you are dealing with a narcissist so a part of your love journey is about learning how to support yourself um, in the realms of communication, your thoughts, your ideas, okay? Um, not allowing other people to change, like, the way that you think about yourself and think about life, okay? So let's tap more into how you can show up for yourself on this love journey. Self-love journey. We have friendship. Okay. Um, now, this is a reading about self-love. But I also feel like, because I mentioned gravitating towards people that really can hear you and understand you and validate your reality, validate your ideas of self, your situation, your life, right? Um, and communicating to others that really truly support your truth right um and so what i'm feeling about this friendship is like i do feel like there's a sense of being your own friend you know um here but i also feel like gravitating towards other people like really finding your true friends in life I think right now with the snake energy that we're tapping so deeply into your reading, there are snakes around you and you've been, you've had to go through a garden of snakes. I'm just seeing like a garden with lots of snakes and someone walking through it barefoot, being vulnerable, you know, and they're also showing me walking on eggshells. So that's a term that we use for people that are that have these mental illnesses that are triggered, right? And so you gotta walk around on eggshells hoping that you don't trigger these people, right? Um, which is impossible. You're able to, you know, when you're walking on eggshells, you're gonna crack, you're gonna crunch, you're gonna make sound. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, impossible to not make sounds and to not trigger these people, right? And so I feel like a part of your love journey is really um, gravitating towards people that are mutually supportive, um, that are healthy, 
like true friendship. It says the energy of friendship supports our eccentric desire for connection with others based on mutual affection and appreciation, really gravitating towards people that really appreciate you and that don't just want to use you, don't want just want to control you, just don't only want you or just that don't want to control you, that are not fixed on controlling you, that are not fixed on making sure that you fit a box and that you fit a certain what do I want to say? Personality, um, role in their life that serves only them. Friendship is not about that. Friendships, you're, you're supposed to be able to grow. You're able, you're supposed to grow and be able to shed. Okay. And sometimes you'll realize when you're real focused on your shedding and your, your involvement, you'll realize that there's a lot of people that can't grow with you. You outgrow them right? You outgrow them and you, they are part of that skin that you leave behind. And then there's some people that are with you for the long run, you know? And so I feel like a part of your self-love journey is recognizing who is a friend and who is a not, and then acting accordingly. Some of these people don't even need an explana explanation. They already know it, whether they want to deny it or they want to, um, whether they want to deny it or play games on themselves. Lie to themselves. They ain't got nothing to do with you. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. Them lying to themselves have nothing to do with you. And don't need... Because some of these people, you know that they know. That they've been outed. Um, they know their true skin. They know their true colors. They know who they are when they're alone in their room in the dark they know who they are when they look at themselves in the mirror you don't need to try to convince these people of who they are you know and that's a part of your self-love journey and the people that are true friends you're not gonna have to do that with you can have a normal conversation even if it's about bringing something to them hey you know like um, this is how I feel. This is how I felt when you did this. And when you said this and this, you know, a true friend is going to take into consideration of how you feel. And if they feel like, oh, you got me wrong. It's not going to be some dysfunctional, um, up, uproar. And they're not going to dismiss your feelings. So it's about finding true friendship here that is gonna be an act of self-love for you and it's more about recognizing who's not a friend who is unhealthy who is unable to be a friend just because of who they are at this time in life or just who they are mm -hmm. okay we have soul the energy of soul activates our connection to the part of us that is closer to the higher realms, God and divine. And so I feel like a part of your self-love, you're going to be about, it's going to be about connecting to source, really being on your divine path. Like I mentioned, you know, Isis, I've mentioned, um, like these archetypes, you know, it could be Venus, it can be you know, um, any kind of deity, I see them as, you know, there are many different perspectives, right? And I honor that. Um, and I also feel like these archetypes live within me, you know, and at certain parts in my life, um, they are embodied, they are surfaced, they come and they, I'm trying to be, I'm not trying to scare you guys, but I embody them, you know? And, um, I feel that energy for you. I feel like you are going to be getting closer to the divine realms. The higher realms are having access. Let's just say it that you're going to have access to these higher realms and um, these higher, the higher thinking, right? And exploration of the human consciousness. And I feel that, you know, this is going to be an act of self-love where you can really begin to talk to God. I think praying is going to be like a great practice for you um 
communication with higher self and with source energy creator, the most high with these archetypes that, um, that live within you, you know, that we all possess. We possess all archetypes within us. They might not all be activated, um, but we can activate them. And then at certain points in their, in our lives, they become activated. Um, in relation to our own journey. Okay. So I feel like that's going to be an act of self love for you. Let's find out some self practices that you can do. Number two, to help on this love journey. Watching movies. I think right now I'm filming this. It's, um, I think it's like the last week of January, right? And we're in the winter right now. But wherever, whenever you're watching this, I feel like this would be a great time for you to just watch movies. Get comfortable, get cozy, watch movies. Um, I do believe that there's going to be a lot of messages being given to you during this time. Um, and just allowing yourself to kind of let these messages communicate things to you about your current circumstances, about yourself. You know, um, I think that's going to be an act of self-love. It's just allowing yourself to kind of like go into story mode. And that's what movies are. They are an act of storytelling, visual st storytelling. <clears throat> Ground yourself. So learning meditation um, and just grounding yourself, grounding practices um, can be very beneficial for you right now on your self-love journey this year, learning to ground yourself in that moment and kind of like, sometimes we can go off on our thoughts, we can go off in our heart, right? In our emotions. Um, we can even become impulsive in our solar plexus energy. And you know, this is about grounding yourself before you act. And I feel like this can really help you in your self-love journey. Is just grounding yourself. It says soak in a bath, right? So one of your self-love journeys is like taking care of your physical body, but also, you know, we have the soul card and being a friend to yourself as well. So taking time to like honor self, doing a goddess bath or a, a, a bath ritual that will um, help with your spiritual and um evolution or even just like help your physical elements 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 okay where you're taking care of your body in that way um i think this is going to be a great self-love practice for you this year is taking an account of maybe you know having a goddess bath each week or um each month intentional the thing is intention right um it says, look for the fairies. And this card always makes me feel like, you know, one of the self practices that you can do, self love practices, is just believing in um, magic. That's what this card makes me feel is like believing in magic and believing in that magical realm of um, things that we're also connected to. And what I'm being, what I'm reading. Right now in the book club, we're about to be finished with the Kabbalion in the Magically Meta book club that's linked down below. Um, what I'm, what we're reading in there, um, what was it? I think it was The Law of Correspondence. It's such a great book, an interesting book, but it talks about the different planes of existence, right? And there was a plane that they said it was an unseen realm that holds the consciousness of animal and human mind. So these are entities that have that those energies. They're animal and they're human, right? There's the animal plane, which we see. We have our cats. We have our, you know, all the animals in the world. And then we have the human plane, all of us, right? It's There's a mental consciousness there. I feel like you can work very well in this realm. Even if you can't see it, you can travel there, right? Um, you can journey there through astral traveling. Also, I feel like you have guides there that want to communicate with you, that can do work 
for you there so um there's an energy of like traveling to these other planes that are unseen i think that's going to be a part of um, your self-love journey is believing in the unseen and being able to believe in magic, right? So let's get one more. Use your hands. Oh my God, you guys, last night I was messing around with clay and creating something for an altar. And so I'm seeing myself do that. I feel like this could be something that, um, can be very beneficial for you, um, um, using your hands, creating art with your hands, creating certain things with your hands, even if it's like, you know, jewelry making. I'm also hearing that too. Um, jewelry making, but using your hands can be an act of self-love. Um, and I'm really getting the, the energy of like creating art, okay? It can be a great self-love practice. It's very meditative, um, expressive. Okay, so let's get some more energies on your self-love journey. It says, Hear, hearing inner guidance. My intuition flows whenever I am still. And this is the thing. I feel like some of you guys could be really, get, have the potential of having others emotionally charge you where you become impulsive. You're lowering your vibration just to meet these people. Um, and I feel like your intuition, if you just silence yourself, you become still, your intuition is going to tell you where you should flow. So that's going to be an act of self-love this year is if you can quiet yourself and really listen, should I, should I, should I do this? Should I do that? Ask these questions to yourself, to your higher self, to your guides, to your fairies to your goddesses, whatever, you know, energies that you work with, even if that's just yourself and God, ask yourself that, should I, what is your intuition telling you and allow yourself to be grounded, allow yourself to get grounded, to really hear this energy because you can't hear it when you're emotionally charged. I'll tell you that. Okay. It says here, grounding my energy. Um, it is safe to be in my body and I feel like, you know, maybe you have learned that it, your body is not a safe place to be, but it's actually the safest place that you could be, you know, um, it's the only place that you really truly possess, you know, um, so I feel like, you know, you need to get safe in your body. I think this is coming out to really give you just a message that you're safe that you and your body is safe you and your home is safe your body is your your first home it's really your only home it it homes your soul you know and you're safe it is safe to be in your body and i feel like people are trying to make you feel like it's you're not safe in some type of way but i feel like if you quiet yourself and you allow yourself to ground you'll really recognize that you are safe and you can't be touched you're actually at a you operate on a higher plane than some of these snakes that you're surrounded by okay it says inviting ecstasy i am worthy of all my pleasure I'm sorry, I am worthy of all the pleasure my heart desires. And so I feel like shifting your vibration, you know, to what is pleasurable to you, you know, um, and inviting that ecstasy into your life versus, you know, gravitating towards the old energy that's dead that you can't connect to anymore. It's time to really embody this new self and what you're being called to. Okay, I want to pull some more cards just to see where you're going what is your self-love journey looking like this year what is it going to start looking like deeper energies you know interesting okay yes thank you spirit one more okay okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah wow this is very crazy yeah I, I just feel like a lot of you guys are going to, in order to really embody, let me show you. We have the Eight of Swords, we have the Five of Pentacles, and we have the Queen of Pentacles here. Okay, so there is a lot of like, <sighs> what I feel that 
you're going to be letting go of stagnancy. You're going to be letting go of stagnancy, feeling trapped. And I feel like the reason why you feel trapped is because you don't want to leave someone behind. You don't want to let go of someone. In order to really step into this Queen of Pentacles energy where you are, let's just say, physically fulfilled in life, you have to see that there is no way around it. And in fact, there's many different ways around it. It's like there's this duality energy that I'm feeling like there's no way around it. And in fact, there's many different ways around this situation. And the only way around it is seeing that there's so many other ways for this to manifest, for your queen of pentacles to manifest. Um, and this energy was really speaking to me, this five of pentacles energy that I see here. It's like there's this person or situation that do you see how this person is like all wrapped up I'm not seeing that as you do you see this hand that's you and these streams of energy that's flowing out of this portal that is your energy it's being taken away you're being shedded and you're leaving you're abandoning the old self you know you're shedding that away and there's a person that hasn't shed their skin there is somebody that's all wrapped up and laying down and processing something and you're on your way out and it's not really your um, responsibility to help them shed this it's not your responsibility to say hey in fact you might have stayed here and tried so many different ways to help this person in fact you were a teacher to this person and at this point it's time to move on. You're no longer supposed to be teaching this person in this way anymore. They have to process what you have taught, what you've said, and it's it's going to manifest in different ways for you guys. It could have manifested in arguments. It could have manifested in communion. It could have manifested in actually teaching someone, trying to help them on their path, you know, and the only way that you are going to actually move on to the next lesson and become this queen of materials, queen of pentacles, is you saying goodbye and you walking away from this situation. So um, I see that um, it's about closing a door. It's about seeing that there's no other thing that you can do in this situation and you got to abandon it. And in fact, maybe, you know, it keeps you stagnant. You feel like you have to stay here because you won't, A, B, and C won't manifest if I go. But in fact, there are many different things that you can do to manifest A, B, and C, whatever that is. And that's the lesson that you're learning, right? And so I feel that you are going to be moving on and stepping really into building your own kingdom you're stepping into the energy that is you're building your own kingdom okay but it does take leaving people behind you know i'm gonna get one more card to tie this all together for you number two sensational realm okay celestial realm i'm sorry um so what I'm feeling for you, number two, is that you have these higher realms that you have access to, okay? That, you know, and there's this energy of like going below, spiraling down below to communicate with these people, trying to get them to be on the same wavelength, and they're not, right? It's like you're trying to bring down a higher way of thinking, a healed way of thinking to this lower plane that you used to operate very well on and now it's like when you go down there and you feel like you're in the circus you're in the you know you're in hell you're in this it feels like hell because you have evolved so much and so when you spiral down it feels like a circus it feels like a mad show it feels crazy here you know what i mean and so you're meant to keep spiraling up and it's not about going down 
to just not like it feels like there's nothing to learn there maybe there'll be times where you got to spiral down in order to learn but because i don't feel like you know you're just continue to you know we go we do this um we do this back and forth in life a lot but it's always to go up and to ascend and to evolve more and i feel like you've passed this point you're going down too low you know what i mean and you're meant to really communicate with your guides and other people that are on higher realms they also you know can operate on higher realms you are going to be really communicating with higher realms as you move forward and that your self-love journey involves your guides your ancestors um you know our our cosmic brothers and sisters okay and that is so beautiful for you number two i hope it gave you insight and of course i am booking readings this month so if you want to go deeper into these energies and these situations we can do so my etsy is down below it is the only place that i book readings with um at and that's the only way that you can book a reading with me if you go there and do it yourself i will never reach out to you guys i'm trying to get you to book with me okay um but if you want to go deeper let's do so um the link is down below okay number two i love you guys and i hope that this reading helped you have insight and i'll see you in the next reading peace hello hello reading number three welcome let's get into your reading let's find out and dive into this self-love energy for you we're gonna go in here and pick out some jewelry pieces these are number ones and number two jewelry i'm not adding it back to my box we're just gonna go in here and get some different energies out for you okay i'm gonna turn my head and just pick it up intuitively I've been picking a couple energies here. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Ooh, I actually got a lot for you guys, I see. So, these readings have been quite long. Okay. Quite long. That's okay. Now, I do want to say I've been having I've been having some um I've been buying a lot of snake so there's a lot of snake energy <laughs> i'm buying a lot of snake jewelry <laughs> i'm gonna eat my food okay mm, so good okay so this one was in reading number two the other earring that goes to this one let me see here Ooh, okay so i've been just really um communicate um connecting with these intuitively let me do this one this is a very old piece um i don't know why i'm so connected to these earrings i made them like years ago um i think i only have one of these this is only one and i just i've never felt the need to fall throw it away but i like creating jewelry and this one i created right and it's th these older pieces kind of bring me back especially this one this was in the beginning of my journey and what is okay so they're actually showing me the night that i made these earrings <laughs> and wow hmm Okay, it's really funny. Okay, so while I was, you know, making these earrings, um, I was so excited and I ended up putting it on, right? And taking a picture of it. And I don't know what happened, but my son, he was, he was like one and a half or something at the time. Like one, he was like one and a half going on two. And he had did something and I had to put him in timeout, right? I had to put him in timeout because he was being bad. And how I used to put him in timeout, like I did most of the time with him, is I would put him in his crib and tell him, you need to calm down. You know, you can come back out when you're quiet, you know, after he stops crying. And then we'll talk about it, right? We'll talk about it. 
about what you did and it's so funny because I'm just like going through my mind reminiscing about this and so I had put him in his crib he had did something I can't remember what he did I think he hit me I think that's what happened um he slapped me and I think that's why I put him in the crib right he had hit me and I was just like we don't hit in this family you don't hit people you respect people's bodies and I put him in the crib and I was like you know you need to chill out you know so what I'm really getting I don't know why this earring brought me back to that but it was showing me the night that I made these and I was like taking pictures of it and then I think maybe I was showing him my earring or doing something with him it was so long ago my son is like gonna be 13 this year and so he hit me and I was like oh my god I was so surprised you know kids you know little babies they hit you they smack you they just do all types of stuff but he really slapped me in the face yo I don't know what happened but I was like okay so what I'm getting with this is like your self-love journey is gonna be about um parenting yourself it's gonna be about parenting yourself it's gonna be a lot about inner child being upset acting out right you're gonna want to see how you are acting out in ways what is your ch inner child doing to get your attention right to um what are they doing is your inner child acting out so much that it's abusing you you know that's what i'm getting from that story <laughs> like is your inner child acting up so much that you're doing things like you're acting like are you letting your inner child just run amok it almost feels like your inner child and you know what these earrings this earring really reminds me of me tapping into that creative energy the creative energy is the inner child right it's the the inner artist is the inner child so your inner child might want to create something right and they're trying to get your attention and they're doing certain things that are like a slap in the face they're harming you you know just so that you can do something about it you know it's like you know when a kid acts up and they get in trouble at school and it's because you know they're not getting the proper care at home that's what I'm feeling so your inner child your self-love is going to be about communicating to your out um to your inner child and understanding well what do you want to do what do you want to create what do you want to have fun i feel like your inner child i don't know why but and this might just be me i feel like your inner child wants to build a fort wants to build a fort and sleep in the fort and just have a fun time in the fort that's what your inner child wants to do so that's really interesting um that's really interesting. I feel like your inner child wants to do that. So, um, it's about exploring things that maybe you didn't get a chance to do. A lot of us, when we go through really dysfunctional upbringings, we forget. We, we didn't have a chance to really tap into that. Like, um, just my own personal, my own personal, like, upbringing. It's not that I didn't go and do kid things. But I know, like, my childhood, my best friend, I've known her since I was, like, nine, right? And so we grew up together. And she'll be like, you remember when this happened? And I'll have, like, a brief memory or I won't remember it at all. But it was because at home, my dad was on drugs. And it was, like, constant, you know, and I... My older sister was constantly trying to get my dad to do right by us. So there was a lot of drama. There was a lot of, like, arguing in our family. And so, and then, you know, my mom, was, I was not raised with my mom. My mom abandoned us. We were always trying to get her to be in our lives. You know, young, like 9, 10 years old, 11, crying, begging my mom to be in our lives. So this is how dysfunctional and crazy it was, right? It's not that I didn't go out and hang out and play with my friend Victoria or other friends and but my mind was somewhere else you know so i feel like your inner child wants to have fun right now it's able to it's like you have all this time why don't you let me do something we couldn't do we couldn't really be fully present back in the day we couldn't really do this or that because we were trying to get 
dad to be right by do right by us we were we were so focused on what mom was doing that i couldn't even go out and do the things my parents weren't even really focused on me doing certain activities because they were so focused on themselves so let's go do that i want to go and play a like you know i want to go play a sport i want to get into something i want to take swimming seriously i want to um take art seriously you know, I want to create something. I want to have fun without really focused on all this drama. And now we can do it. That's what your inner child is doing. And then they're trying to do things to hurt you. Because they're like, well, F it. I'm going to do it anyways. And they're, you know, kids run wild when it's not guided. So it's time to parent yourself and also parent in a loving way where you allow yourself to have fun. Okay? That's going to be a big part of your, your love journey. Okay? So this came out in number one, but let me look at it and see if there's a different energy. And this is my dagger earring with a drop of blood. Okay. Mm, okay. So, okay. Huh. They're really telling me to pro, you need to process certain things that have been said to you, really painful things that was said to you you know and maybe these are things that you got to process at what that ha was said to you as a child it's almost like okay um um like i remember when i was like i think i was like 17 you know and this could be something that a lot of women go through um with their mothers or like older women in the family right I remember when I was about 17 or 18, there's a lot of inner child, inner teenager that's coming up, you know, inner young adult. I'm still young, but you know, um, I remember when I was like 18, like maybe 19 or something, I was real young and I had lost 80 pounds, right? Um, and I was so proud and so happy. It was finally wearing clothes that I felt comfortable in and that I liked you know anybody that has lost a lot of weight can feel it can uh, you know subscribe to that feeling of being able to wear what they want you know that they've always dreamt of wearing so I was really happy and I was like showing my mom this picture of me right and I was just like me and my sister we were like talking about the weight that she had lost 80 pounds too and she was like we were looking at this picture of just me and we were like god she lost so much weight do you see mom right and she pointed to my armpit armpit fat and was like look at your fat just hanging out there by your armpit like that's what she had to say to me so there's certain things and she's the type of mother that will say those kind of things um there was also like I remember my grandma she would always say things like girl you better watch your way you you know you need to start eating like she would always you know bring up weight the women in our family would always bring up weight and so there's certain things that you might want to process there's also something maybe recently somebody has said to you like I remember I felt like I was explaining and trying to defend myself of why I couldn't be present to certain things last year because of my two miscarriages I was like and I remember telling my best friend about this situation that I was explaining and over defending myself about why I couldn't be present to certain things um and she was like Adrian you are explaining yourself too much you don't got to explain shit that should be said enough like what you said hey I had two miscarriages right that should be enough but this person was making it seem like I had to, like, over explain or like that wasn't enough for them to understand what mentally I was going through last year. And I remember they had said to me, well, how long ago were you, how long ago was your miscarriages? And I was just like, what? And I couldn't believe that this person was saying this and saying it in this tone as if I was using my miscarriages as a scapegoat, right? So there's just certain things that you got to just process about certain things that were said to you. You know what I mean? Like you just got to process it. 
it doesn't really need your action. You know what I mean? And these are really painful things, you know. Um, and this is literally after like two months of healing from the last miscarriage. This person was saying this to me. And I was just like, wow. People, I feel like people right now, especially just in the collective, they are really showing their colors. And it's weird. You know what I mean? And so I feel like there's just some things that you just got to sit with and process it. And really consider how you need to navigate. You know what I mean? Like how you need to navigate. Because people have the potential to draw life force. This is what this makes me think with this little blood drop off of this dagger. Is your life force... With the way people are communicating to you, is your life force, like, aligning with that energy? It's time to draw a life force. It's time to take your power back. It's time to take your life force back from these people that just want to hurt you. That don't really care. They, like, they are showing that they don't care. You know what I mean? In their words, in their actions, or their inactions. You know, and this is about processing certain things that have been said to you. So it can be, you know, really deep stuff. I feel like this is more deep. Even the thing when I mentioned about like the weight loss and all that, like, it's just time to process a lot of things that have said to you. I feel like, you know, I know from my childhood, just the way that my parents were and how we were raised. You know, I got accustomed to just taking shit, taking shit from people, you know, because that's all I could do with my parents. They would do certain things and I would just be confused. Why is my parents not like my friend's parents? You know, like, why are they doing this? And I sat silent because you don't know how to process that when you're that young. So even as an, in an adult situation, when people throw me off guard and they say certain things to me or about me, it's like I get stuck like. I'm not quick, like, I have to go and process it and be like, what just happened? You know, like, what was just said and why? Should I accept this? Should I pull my energy away? And I feel like even though sometimes I'm like, dang, why wasn't I quick on my feet? Why didn't I say something when this person said something to me, you know? Now, in that conversation about the miscarriage, I went off. It just pulled like so much pain to the surface and just who it was coming from I was so confused who it was coming from I was so confused and I was just like hurt instantly you know and it, it's okay if you haven't experienced that but you should you know understand that even if you physically heal for something like that losing a child is nothing easy it doesn't just because you heal physically there's not an emotional wound or a mental wound or a spiritual wound that you got to heal you know what I mean and you don't have to go through something like that to understand that but these people are set on not understanding you and it's not even about that it's it, honestly it's something more deeper it's their inner child honestly that they haven't dealt with so I feel like a lot of your healing and your self-love is about processing what's been said um things that you've heard it could even be like oh you know i heard these two people at the age of eight talking about some inappropriate stuff and you know it's like dealing with inner child stuff and then just also processing dirt certain things okay so <clears throat> I have these two earrings, which I cannot wait to wear. A lot of these jewelries I haven't worn yet. So there's like these diamond encrusted snakes that I have. I'm really into the snake energy, y'all. And they have green eyes. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, ooh. And there's like this, there's like these, um, the snakes are like coiled around the hoops, right? They have green eyes. So what I'm feeling is like you have a lot of people that could possibly be jealous of you. Green eyes make me think of envy. 
um, these, this snake is like wrapped around you. So it could be someone that tries to like wrap themselves around you and include themselves in everything that you do. They mimic you. Um, they copy you. They might not even have like a real sense of identity and true self. Um, they're jealous, right? They're jealous of you. And I also feel like they just want all of your time and your energy, you know, to a very unhealthy um, point. And so I feel like a lot of your self-love, number um, three, is recognizing this, recognizing it for what it is. And there's a lot about processing and analyzing, right? And I feel like also this person is too close, you, you know, too close for you can't even feel like... Um, I had this relationship in my life where I felt like this person, whatever I did, they had to do. And at first, I, I really saw it as like, you know, I spoke about this in number one, about the karmic and the divine energy, right? We all, all of us go through this. We teeter and totter back and forth in different phases, different levels of life between karmic and divine energy. It's the way that we find ourselves. We are a chain of teachers and students, right? And so I feel like that's what I saw it as. I saw it as like, oh, this person is inspired. But after years and years of this happening, it was just like too much. You know what I mean? But I'm a very soft person. I don't like to hurt people's feelings. I never spoken on it, you know? Um, but it just got to a point where I felt like I had to hide certain things that were dear to me because I was just like, I want to be my own self. You know what I mean? So I also feel like you have a tendency, even if that's not your story, you have the tendency of people like wrapping themselves around you and you have the tendency of having people envy you and you might take it personal. You take what they say, what they do, um, personal like it's something to do with you because you're a soft person so a part of your self-love journey is recognizing that you are really really lovable and people really really love who you are to the fact that they want to be you you know they you inspire them to become some type of version that is you know similar to who you are you know and this can even come in the form of people mistreating you and hurting you and doing certain things to hurt you, um, doing certain things to slip you up, tear you down because they want something that you have. And I just remember this one time, it was in the beginning of my, my journey, you know, of reading cards and tapping into my psychic energy and... I remember I was reading this, um, reading cards or I was talking about something and this person was like really tearing me down and trying to make me not believe in my intuition and make me believe that I didn't know what I was doing when I was reading cards just because this person was intimidated by me, intimidated by my psychic power. Now during the time that it was, she was trying to tear me down. I didn't recognize it as that. It took time for me to process the things that she said, the things that she did, how she looked, her energy that she was in. Like I had to take time to really process all that energy and shift through my own insecurities, shift through a lot of energy. But it's about recognizing that, you know, you have the way, you have a way of moving people. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to internalize everything that they say. In fact, you shouldn't internalize anything. When people want to compliment you on your beauty and your greatness, you shouldn't, you shouldn't internalize that either. You know, um, don't internalize what other people do and what they say to you. That's what I'm feeling from these earrings. We have this Cobra, which I love. I just recently wore these. These are earrings. This is an earring and, um, it's a Cobra. And, um... What I feel about this is that you are enchanting. Um, part of your self-love journey is going to be about enchanting yourself, hypnotizing life and self. This is a, a power that you have. Um, you are the snake charmer as well. So there's a lot of snakes here around you that could be. And you're able to charm them in such a way, you know. Um, 
I also feel like you can use this to benefit you, you know, to protect you. You can use this energy to protect you through life. So part of your self-love energy this year is going to be about enchanting and empowering yourself through you know using your hypnotic energy and this takes you realizing this about yourself realizing that you are so enchanting realizing that you in a lot of you guys don't know this about yourself and you internalize this person's enchantment because this is the thing you have the ability to enchant people right and then they realize that you are human in some type of way. You might, you know, they realize something. Whether they say, oh, this person is just like me. Why do they have what, they, what I don't have? And then it turns into jealousy, right? Or they internalize something that you say. Instead of taking what you say as, in, as advice, um, they become offended, right? And they say, oh, this person isn't this magical creature, but you are, but you're also human, you know? Um, and so it's learning how to use this energy, learning to understand when people are really just enchanted by you. And there is, this isn't a true love, um, intimacy, true love or intimacy story. This is just someone kind of like enchanted by you and you can use this to protect yourself, okay? We also have this beetle here this little beetle that I love I'm attracted to beetles as well and beetles are representative of balance for me becoming ba balanced in the masculine and the feminine energies I don't know if that's like a universal thing but I know for me that's what it means to me that's why I bought this earring to like you know embody that energy within myself so I feel like part of your self-love journey is tapping into your masculine and your feminine energies and merging those to benefit you okay I also feel like a part of your love journey, a practice that could help you is journeying because um, this was actually the first pet of, uh, set of earrings that I bought to adore myself and they kind of revealed their purpose to me. I'm very intentional with everything I do, you guys, like things that I buy, clothing, jewelry, books, um, certain things that I choose to share on the channel or creatively, like I'm very, very intentional with my life. Um, and so and intuitive and so these kind of revealed like why they came into my life it was this schematic and stress ancestry energy that's in me um and so i feel like a part of your self-love journey is going into schematic healing learning how to journey um and we can all learn to do this we don't need to go sit under a shaman that would be great Right. But not everybody has that ability. And in fact, we all have this technology within us. We don't need someone to truly guide us. We can learn. We can go um, and learn for ourselves how to journey. So I feel like journeying can be a big part of your self-love journey. Um, we have this little snake here. Right. And I this earring. What I'm feeling with this is that kind of the same that I felt from number one, but I feel like, um, I think there needs to be a realization that there's a situation that you're already disconnected from. Um, you need, a, your self love journey, part of it is recognizing when you are not connected anymore. You might stay too long, you might over explain, you might overextend your energy, and in fact, you are no longer connected to this situation energetically, is what I'm feeling, or connected to this person. You have the tendency to stick around too long, and this could be because of your upbringing, but a part of your self-love journey is recognizing, oh, my, my energy is no longer he really here, it's over here, and if I just divert my attention my whole reality changes you know that's what i'm feeling um yes and this came out for number two this snake earring is curling and coiling up so i feel like you are part of your self-love journey is about 
continuing to rise right now. Um, I feel like you don't have the need to like for number what was this number two number two had the need to like go down and fight right because this is a very aggressive snake here its mouth is open they're ready to bite but i feel like this there's something up up top that is calling you there's food up there that's what i'm feeling for number two it was more like oh let me go and attack let me go put my two cents in when your two cents for number two would be better just going up, right? You don't need to spiral down. It's a waste of your energy. But I feel like you're not in that. You are more in like going upwards and you might feel a little bit guilty. Or you might feel like you need to like move a little bit slower. It's not like you're trying to go back down, but you're moving a little bit slow because it feels weird, you know? And so I feel like a part of your journey right now is just continue to go up. There's dinner up there. There's something that's going to feed you up there. There's actually nothing down below. You don't feel like you want to go down below, but you're just like, oh, I'm going up. Okay, I'm going to keep going. And there might be this energy of feeling guilty that you're going up, you know, but I feel like spirit is saying like your self-love journey is about letting go of that guilt because you need to go and eat. Okay, so we have surrender. Let's get into our cards. I've been talking for a long time. The energy of surrender supports us to let go of illusionary control and yield to the flow of life from love and life. So a lot of like, that's what I was feeling with the snake energy, like just surrendering to this flow upwards. Let's just surrender to that. Your energy is no longer here. And um, there is this energy of like excitement, right? Inner child, your inner child wants to do things. You need to turn your attention to what your inner child needs. Okay. And if you have children, look to your inner, to your children to gather messages, right? From the inner child, um, and what you need to be focusing on the, um, but the surrender energy is about just letting go, surrendering to what is. Um, I want, I really want to say that God's got you, you know, and God can't really do its work unless you really surrender. God knows what you want. Just surrender. You know, <laughs> I've been getting that message a lot lately. Like just surrender. Why are we fighting? You know, like even if it's fighting yourself, you know, like you don't need to fight. Just surrender and breathe for a moment, you know? So your self love journey is going to be about surrendering to the flow you know, surrendering that you're, you're going somewhere, you know, and not fighting against it. Okay. Number three, let's see what else we have freedom. And this made me think of the beetle energy. Um, freedom. It says the energy of freedom supports our sense of limitless possibility and potential, boundless expression and bold exploration. So yes, like I feel like a part of your self love journey right now is just being free. If you feel trapped in any type of way, you need to go and process what that is. The dagger, right? Process what's being said, process your ideas, process your belief systems so you can be free from something because there is surrender to freedom. You need to recognize that you are free, that you are a free person to do whatever you want. You don't have to abide by anybody's narrative but your own but gods okay we have kindness and here's the thing don't let people uh, an act of self-love is not letting anybody take you out of who you are there's going to be things that people say to you people say about you they're going to lie about you they're going to try to paint a picture to fit their own distorted reality and you can't let somebody take you out of your own nature who you really are are you're not an ugly person number three so if even if somebody wants to be ugly continue to go up continue to surrender to the flow of the up current that you're currently on right now it says the energy of kindness reminds us to be considerate and wise in our interactions with others and ourselves and to find the root of love through our connection to source so you don't need to match anybody's energy all you need to know is if it resonates with you 
And if it doesn't, you can move away from it. And I know that that's hard, you know? And I felt like number two, they have a hard time grounding themselves in like they kind of get taken away with their emotions and i feel like right now this is your superpower where you're able to kind of like process what's been said what's been done and you're not taken out of character you are not letting it trap you you're surrendering to what people say to you you are surrendering to what people do you are allowing yourself to be free and if it doesn't resonate you can there's so much space here that's what you're recognizing and your self-love journey is about recognizing how free you are actually and you don't have to be trapped in a lower vibration okay we have forgiveness here the energy of forgiveness strengthens our capacity to let go of unwanted feelings and emotions and i feel like forgiveness i know it's corny here it comes though forgiveness is for you <laughs> you know it's not really for them you know, and this is the thing when you are struggling with forgiveness and I have like this, um, forgiveness to me is really ac acceptance. It is acceptance of what is, it is surrender. You know, forgiveness is not about saying, okay, I'm going to allow you to do these things to me. It's, it's not saying, okay, what you did, it's okay that you did that now. That's not forgiveness. Forgiveness is saying, okay, you did this and I let go of it. Because when we hold energy of resentment, when we hold energy of, um, of resentment and anger and hurt, that will only manifest more in our lives. So forgiveness is really for us because it's a letting go of an energy. You know, and that doesn't mean you have to let that person back into your life. That doesn't mean that you um, you have to surround these people in your life or that it's okay that they did these things. In fact, it, you know, the acceptance is for you, you know, um, and it's about letting go of those unwanted energies, right, and emotions. Um, and it strengthens us. It makes us stronger. Cause especially when you're analyzing certain things, you know, um, it helps you show up better for yourself, you know? And so forgiveness, a lot of people, I think, you know, we think forgiveness is about making it all better and okay. You know, there's certain things that people have done to me that in a sense, in another definition, it's unforgivable, right? But to me, it's just about accepting that this was done and now I'm going to move accordingly. That is safe for me. And I'm letting go of all the bad energy that's going to hit you. You know, because energy goes. When you're in resentment and anger and sadness, it makes us out of control of our own feelings, our own thoughts, and those manifest. So forgiveness when we forgive we're letting go of those unfeeling what energies that are gonna go towards that person and eventually make its way back to us that's just the law so forgiveness is for us truly because as we send that hateful energy out that's why you gotta just stick with the kindness you know kindness is saying you know what you don't deserve my energy that is the best thing like this is the thing i don't believe in like revenge the best revenge is just taking away your energy taking away your energy that's it that's the best revenge um i don't want to hurt you i'm not trying to do nothing to you i don't want no harm to come towards you um i don't want no harm to come towards me so i'm gonna exit Okay, so I want you to look at forgiveness in that perspective. Okay, um, originality. Um, it says the frequency of originality supports our capacity to be unique and you and original creators of unlimited possibilities in every moment. I feel like a lot of your self love journey is about just kind of breaking away from being really entwined with someone that wants to be you that Oh, it's like this um, frenemy kind of energy that I'm feeling where they act and smile like they like you, but they really 
don't like you. They just want these qualities that you possess. So they want the things that are in your life, whether it's a man, a family, um, a beauty. Creativity is a big one. Um, the ability to just be kind, like you're just a good person, you know? So I feel like you need to just break away and allow yourself to be in your original energy, you know, your original expression. All right. So let's look at some practices that you can do aromatherapy. Um, I think one of the self-love practices is maybe creating oils, creating some type of, um, you know, uh, perfume for yourself. A lot of creating it is coming up in number. I think it was number one. I talked about having a subscription to a perfume company that would send me different perfumes, right? And I saw this as like gifting myself, but I'm kind of seeing for you, that might be a good practice, but I'm also seeing that you can make your own perfumes, magically enchant them as well, okay? Could be an act of self-love. So we have movement. One of your self-love um, activations can be go can happen through movement. Yoga, dancing, she's obviously doing yoga, right? Um, tai Chi, somatic yoga. I feel like a lot of your self-love practices can come through moving your body and shifting out those unwanted energies, okay? Transmuting it. Let's transmute that energy. Let's go from sad to okay and then to happy, you know? We have this right here. So part of your self-love energy is allowing yourself to enjoy physical pleasure with the person or with yourself. Okay, I love that. One of your self-love practices can be about reading, enjoying a good book, whether it's a story or, you know, something else, self-help, you know, join the book club, uh, magically meta down below. Okay. Sound healing. One of your self-love practices can be listening to really good music or just music. Cause I'm also hearing, um, it's a bittersweet symphony this life. I need to hear some words that recognize the pain in me. Yeah. So it's like even the bad songs that recognize that pain within you, it helps you kind of like get that energy out. So healing sounds though, maybe going to a sound bath, giving yourself a sound bath, that's going to be quite healing for you. A sweet treat. So one of your self-love practices can be um, a sweet treat, baking it or going to pick up your favorite dessert, like treating yourself, indulging in that. Massage. One of your self-love practices can be go, making sure that you're getting a massage, you know, each month. I have to book mine, actually, and I'll be doing so probably after I do this. My whole goal is to get a massage, a massage each month. And I also feel like it's so important to find someone that knows what the hell they're doing. Like, my massage therapist, she is an earth angel, and I love her so much. Like, um... I just love her so much like I had to reschedule with her because of the miscarriage you know because at first I thought I was pregnant I couldn't get it until the second trimester and um, and then I had to like you know of course heal physically you know emotionally heal I don't really like going to um, massage therapists if I'm have a lot of emotions to process you know what I mean but she was just like I told her she did so much good work on me the last time I was with her and I was like girl thank you you know like you don't know how good and she just started crying and I was like telling her about the miscarriage it was just crazy but I really if you're gonna get a massage I really suggest you look to someone that really knows what they're doing and that they are like it's hard to find a good person but don't give up they out there anyways let's go into these cards okay embracing worthiness okay i feel worthy filling every cell of my body and it feels amazing so i feel like you are worthy to be here number three that is a part of your love um self-love journey is knowing that you're worthy of good things 
you know, growing up in dysfunction and in trauma, sometimes we don't believe that we, you know, we're worthy of being treated right. To being treated, like, I feel like there's a person that doesn't see you as a human. They don't see you. And narcissists, actually, they don't really see these people in their lives as actual, like, an individual person. They might even think that your identity is meant for them. You know what I mean? And so I feel like you can feel like you're not worthy of having something that's yours, having something that's great. These people might have made you feel like the good things in your life. You're not worthy of them. Why do you have it? Because you're this and you're that and I should have it. It's like you're worthy of good things. Number three. You're worthy of being here. When it says, I feel worthiness filling every cell, filling it, filling up your body with every cell. And it's amazing. Like your existence is amazing. Number three. Okay. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise. Celebrating simplicity. I am more fulfilled when there is less to manage and maintain. And that's the thing. I feel like you're on your up as you travel upward and you surrender to the flow upward, you're realizing that you're becoming lighter because you're dropping a lot of weight. You're dropping, you're not, you, you know, as you travel up higher into the higher planes, you don't take a lot with you. You don't take a lot of trauma. You don't take a lot of like insecurity. You don't take a lot of others bullshit. Okay. And so as you go up, you're realizing that you are so fulfilled just on the simple things about your life. Gravitate towards that. Don't gravitate towards people's um, chaos. Your life, I think if you would step back and smell the roses of your life, your forever roses, you'll realize that you have a lot to be happy about. And that a lot of the things that you're unhappy about are other people's bullshit. And you just got to process what they've done and process what they say. Know that it's not for you to internalize and realize, wow, my life is actually a lot simple. My life is really simple, actually. And there's a lot of other people that are making it hard for you. Okay. <clears throat> and it's not your responsibility. Soothing in patientness. Okay. There is nothing to do. There is nothing to do but to wait. So this is making me feel that a lot of your a lot of your self-love journey is going to be just um and I saw what's his name I'm about to I'm it's it's like right there. I think it's called the follow up. I think that's his Instagram and he had posted something about manifestation, right? And so this makes me feel like it it aligns with worthiness and your connection to source. So he was saying like you, you know, you're patient when you're in your mastery and you are working on manifesting with something and you know that the source, source all most high will take care of you. You just, you are patient. You are patient because you know it's coming to you. So a lot of your self-love journey is, I feel like your self-love journey is going to lead you to the things that you've been waiting for. That's what I want to say. Okay, but let's get into some of these cards. Let's see how your journey is going to be. What's up ahead in your self-love journey? Okay. Yeah, we already knew all this, Spirit. Okay, so here's our beautiful cards. We have the Five of Emotions. We have the page of wands. So the five of emotions is that five of cups energy. The page of wands here. And we have the king of materials, the muse of materials, the king of pentacles. Okay, king of pentacles there. So what I'm feeling with this energy here for you, number three, is that I see you with this five of cups. With this five of cups here. This is the energy of no longer focusing on the things that have failed. You know, that snake energy where you realize like, oh, this is done. I don't got to be in this. It's almost like you're being in the past, you know? And that's exactly what the Five of Cups is. It's about, ooh, okay, thank you, Spirit. Thank you. Ooh, okay, Spirit, thank you. Okay, we'll take those two. You guys are the extra long reading. But this is about 
moving away from the past, realizing, oh, I'm not there no more. Like, I don't, I'm not, I don't live with my drug addicted father that, you know, left us alone for days, you know? And I say that, I want you guys to know that I say these things about my life so that you can understand certain things about your life. Like your mind might be there at times. And I remember being in a time in my life where I could only focus on that. I spent, you know, in my adult years crying and like about those things because honestly even though we were crying as kids um it wasn't enough there was times where we had become consistent um um desensitized you know and accustomed conditioned to it and it was dysfunctional right so as adults we realized it again we realized what happened to us and we got to do the whole pro like we got to process everything because we didn't process it really back then so I see that for you is like recognizing, oh, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm actually not that little girl that was abandoned. I am 30 something years old and I can parent myself. I can take care of myself where I felt neglected. I can show up for myself, you know, like, and I really feel that for you. I feel like you turn your back to the things that have failed, you know, like you might've felt very abandoned. Um, recently and even just abandoned in the past but now you know that you can show up for yourself there's actually potential behind you in the upflow right the upflow that we were talking about so I feel that you turn your back away from the things that are disappointed the things that you can't change the 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 painful things you're no longer focusing on it because you're realizing oh i'm not even attached to this anymore you know if i take my attention off and i look at my reality it's actually really good it's actually really simple it's actually really beautiful and you know i'm not all these things that these people say that i am you know and actually when you go deeper into realization you start realizing oh wow i'm was born to a family of karmics and narcissists and I am the chain breaker and the way that I choose to move in my reality is me creating a different chain you know and with this page of wands this is the energy of going off and finding um the, that inner child that inner child fun energy like going out to have fun a lot of your gener your energy this year with self-love is going to be about you. Um, wow. It's going to be about you um, having a lot of fun. Okay. We also have the king of pentacles, right? A lot of your self-love journey is going to be, is going to lead you to um, what you want physically, being really financially stable and physically um, stable in life, okay? Which is really great. And it's all about choosing what is satisfying to you, leaving behind what is emotionally disappointing, things that you can't change, things that you're no longer in. And these were the two cards that fell out that I was like, okay, spirit wanted me to add this. Do you see how beautiful these cards are? Number three, chariot, 10 of cups, you're going to get your wish fulfillment. You're going to have that family. You're going to have that tribe around you. You're going to have success. You know, you're, I feel like you're, you're at the beginning of your success story. And it's all about choosing yourself, choosing not to, you know, bend and twist your character. And I was feeling like a tingling sensation on the top of my head. And I really feel like you are going to be stepping into like, um, this new version of self. There's like cunilindi energy that I was just feeling right now. And I feel like you're, you're awakening to your own, you're awakening to your own personal story of success and healing. And so I feel like it's about just recognizing that it wasn't ever you, you know, it, and you, you stayed true to character and it's going to lead you there, you know, and it's just about believing that you're worthy of it. I think that's the next step. You're when you turn away from this disappointing energy, you turn towards happiness and then you realize, oh, I am worthy of having everything that I want. I am worthy of a really good life. And it comes to you. Okay. Number 
three. I'm going to pull one more card just to pull it together. Nest. And um, I feel like you are leaving the nest, number three. You are leaving the nest. And there's other, you know beings there that haven't hatched hasn't had their awakening yet maybe they won't ever hatch it's not really up to you but this part of this life um that you're in right now this phase of life concerning self-love it's about leaving the nest and maybe going to build your own nest you know um i feel like you have all the resources to have something of your own to build something a set apart from anyone else and um you the moment that that becomes a reality is when you take your attention off of um things that are not your responsibility and it's like you know what i'm seeing i'm seeing like all these eggs they're a part of you in some type of way right but you've hatched you've stuck around and maybe you tended to these eggs because the mommy and the daddy bird wasn't there. And even though the mommy and the daddy bird is still not there, you still got to go take flight. You got to go parent yourself. You got to teach yourself how to fly. And it's not your responsibility to make sure that these these eggs hatch and they break through certain that hard shell that you did. They got to be strong enough to break through. And that it's not your fault if they never break through, even if they want to make it your fault. Okay, so that's what I'm feeling. That's the last message on your self-love journey here. Number three, I hope you enjoyed this reading. I am um, booking readings this month so we can go deeper into this energy and make it even more personal. Um, if you want to do so, my link is down below. You can book readings with me through Etsy. That's the only place that I book readings for I'm really excited for you. Number three, I think I'm excited for you more than all the other piles. And I think that's why you have the longest reading is because you are about to really step into your personal success story. And I don't think you truly have been able to leave the nest um, and discover the next, like, I don't want to say the next cha chapter because there's a lot of originality here. Like, I don't want to say that you don't know yourself, but there's a higher version that you're going to start to get to know. You know what I mean? You're going to start to get to know. And there's this last part of looking at the past. There's this last part of analyzing certain things and things are all clicking. And it was the key for you to actually leave and take flight. And I feel like you're going to go and see a whole new world. You're going to see a whole new world this year, number three. So let me know down below how you felt about this reading, and I will see you in the next. Peace.